The Football Pod on Off The Ball in partnership with AIB. Proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. Hashtag the toughest. Hello there and you're very welcome back to a very special episode of The Football Pod this week. I've got Paddy Andrews with me. Hi Paddy. Hello there. James O'Donoghue is back at top of the left. That me? Sorry. And right in the centre wearing number 14, David Clifford, you're very welcome to the football pod. How are you? Oh, all good. Good to have you along. Um, David, we can see it. The lads are wondering whether an East Kerry jersey there you've got on, but no, it's a, it's a Super Value jersey. We're uh, speaking to David today as part of Super Value's launch of the Gaelic Football Championship and their uh, community includes everyone campaign. So you're uh, doing the rounds today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I suppose I'm. I'm looking enough to be part of the Super Value campaign now for the last few years. Um, so yeah, it's always a it's always a busy day in the calendar. How's the uh, body after the weekend? Yeah, not too bad. Um, came through it injury free, thank God. Um, good to get off the mark, I suppose. Um, big spread of scores in the game, so yeah, we're happy enough. Good stuff. Um, I have to be honest, we've had James O'Donoghue on the football pod since the day he announced his <laughs> retirement back in January 2021, and the or January 2022. The only time I've seen him be jealous and miss playing for Kerry was when he got wind that you boys were off to Portugal on a warm weather training camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's because, Cliffy, I thought you'd come back with a better tan. Like, it's surely you got a, you got a, Crow Park as well. <laughs> you surely got a couple of evenings to just chill out. <laughs> or yeah, we used to, no, in fact, our Portugal trips were helter-skelter, like as in the amount of times you touch the ball over those couple of days and touch it in the warm weather. There's just something about your relationship with the ball. You come back way sharper. How, what, kind of, what kind of stuff were you doing over there? A hundred percent, yeah. Um, like, I suppose, it was different in terms of training, like, in consecutive days, like, um, probably something yeah. we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have done at home. Um, I suppose we were lucky with a lot of conditioning work probably done before we went out. Um, so over there, it was about football. It was about, as you said, getting your hands on ball. Um, I suppose it's tricky, like because the man, like management and stuff, are trying to pull you back from maybe doing yeah. disaster sessions and stuff like that, and you're probably anxious to do a bit more. Um, but no, yeah, it was brilliant, Jack. And like you said, come home. Obviously, it was tough going, so you come home tired, but but very sharp as well, you know. That's always the best part of the session when you hammer the goalies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you play AVBs over there? Was it kind of uh, not really? Sessions, or what? Yeah, it was more. It was more. I suppose um, it was more training. It was more like we we slow. We were able to slow things down a lot tactically. Like so, we got a lot. I think we got an awful lot from that. We never went on a warm weather training. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ! Trips to Port. I'd still be playing. I'm going to wait for Desi Farrell to bring me to bring, bring me on one of these trips to Portugal. Jesus Christ! In fairness, Paddy, you were, you were all on a five kilometer radius, and you had six a.m. training sessions, one p.m. training sessions, five o'clock training um, sessions. <laughs> Stop, stop, I tell you. And you get the sunny weather in Dublin anyway. Down here, it literally does not stop raining. <laughs> Looking out, it's not too sunny today, Jimmy, I have to say. <laughs> and was there like, is there team bonding on a trip like that? Are you playing golf or something? Are you together? All, like, what's the crack? Like, are you together all the time? Or Crazy golf was as good, was as, good as it got for us. But um, <laughs> no, well, of course, you're spending so much time together. Like, you're, you're obviously getting getting closer to fellas. You're being able to, like I said, I suppose, to have... have uh, in terms of tactical stuff, you're able to spend a bit, bit, bit more time on stuff. But of course, there's downtime, and there's, you know, there's time to, there's, there's way more time to spend together. Um, so that's that's very enjoyable. I suppose we become very, very close as a group. I suppose this kind of team has been together now, give or take, for a good few years. So you're you're really starting to build relationships with fellas. Um, and I suppose just focusing on trying to trying to build connections with fellas because I suppose that's what. That's what's going to get you through the. That's what's going to get you through the tougher stages of games later in the year. No, I was just thinking back to one of our Portugal trips. We were told to bring our own cereal, Cliffy, right, or our own breakfast. So, fella, it was my the first time I was called into Kerry was a Portugal trip. Someone got injured, so my first time was just go to Portugal with the boys. So that is bringing obviously porridge and weed, mix, all that stuff, sugar puffs. I brought. <laughs> Oh, it was comical. This is what we have to do with Dave every every week listening to this show. <laughs> I, don't, I don't envy. <laughs> James, you were obviously in a, you know, a, a senior part of the dressing room in 2018 when the likes of David, yeah. uh, Sean O'Shea, Thomas Sullivan are breaking into that team, that generation now um, that are obviously the, the centre of it. As you were in the dressing room, could you see them uh, taking charge more or, or, or growing into themselves as those, those years are going on? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Like, it's very rare the fellas come through straight from from 
under 18, under 19, even under 20. No, there's not many coming through and actually playing. So the boys were coming through and starting on the team. So everyone knew kind of around the, around the county that there was a couple of special fellas coming through. Obviously, Cliffy, more than anyone, but we were just waiting for them to kind of take us on another level. So it was a really easy transition. You know, we were kind of welcoming with open arms to kind of take us on because we, we hadn't won since 14, obviously. So we didn't get over the line in, in 18 or 19. Unfortunately, it was the year that I left that the boys finally got over the line. <laughs> Dressing room missing anyone like a James Dunhill at the minute or do you have any messers to pick up the mantle? <laughs> uh, James left and then Jack Savage left this year. So we're, we're kind of struggling a bit at the moment. Uh, we still have a few, right? And, and there's always a few, I suppose, fellas maybe that step out from the pack and, and kind of grow into their roles as... um. We call him the we call him the class clown. So now we've we've plenty of them. Okay, <laughs> Paddy, just we were talking. Day, Michael, just a question on, on that from, from our perspective. Obviously, looking from Dublin, like you were an unbelievably high profile and successful underage player. Like, probably the success you had in schools, and then obviously with, with the Kerry minors. You see it so much with young players coming through, or their standout minors or under twenties, under twenty ones, and it takes them usually as James has said a couple of years to make that step up and that's even in, in maybe weaker counties but you were coming into the absolute top of the game a team competing to win all Ireland's and in, in some instances players never make that step up but for you to come in in your first year in 18 I think I remember the first time we played you it was a league game in Crow Park in 2018 and, and we were we knew all about you like it was like for us to have the attention on you and you were only a young fella coming in your debut season it was incredible. But what was for you was the biggest change that you feel to go from the, the really dominant, unbelievably successful underage player to step into the, the Kerry senior team? What did you find challenging? Because it looked seamless enough, but what made you think, oh, I need to up my game here at this level now? Um, yeah, like I suppose, I suppose the, the biggest one and the most obvious one was around the physicality. Like you were getting, I just find to start, it's, it's a bit harder to win your own ball, but more more importantly, then you just didn't have the same time on the ball. Um, and and then I spoke like that. Look, that just came with time. Like you, you probably just couldn't rush that. You, you just had to trust the S and C lads just that you were going to be getting stronger and stronger each year. Um, and I suppose the other one then was I, I just I suppose it's, it's still the case, but definitely when I started out, it was around shots and shooting. Like when you were playing with a minor team, maybe, or when you were playing with you know, Fuss or whatever, like you could miss your first two or three shots, but sure, no one was going to, <laughs> no one's going to have any problem if you kept shooting all day. Whereas, like coming into a senior team with Kerry, you couldn't really justify. Like, let's say if you missed your first two or three shots in a game, you couldn't really justify keep shooting and maybe, you know, you might you couldn't really be coming having coming away from a game having maybe scored three out of seven or three out of eight shots. So I suppose that was kind of one of one of the big differences as well, where you had to, I used to find early in the games you just had to put a bit of pressure on yourself maybe to get on the scoreboard just to try and get into a game a bit more. You know, what? Why did that click with you? Was it one of the senior players or did somebody pull you and have a word at you early on or? Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. Like, I suppose it was just something that you probably started to realise yourself. Um, like, maybe from watching some of the lads, like, you kind of knew that, okay, like, you know, you're going to have to be getting scores on the board early because I remember the first few games playing with Kerry, you're kind of looking over your shoulder a bit because you're kind of saying, geez, this fella's on the bench behind me. James actually came on for me in my first game. So, you know, instances like that, like, where you're like, do you know, I kind of have to perform early days here. It's, it's what game was that? Someone else, it's Dunny Gold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that it? I 100% agree on that side. There's and that's the point I made for, for younger players that can take two or three years to have that one, the self awareness, and then a moment or a game in particular where I actually feel confident in myself to be here now. And, and I said it's probably easier in, in smaller counties, whereas coming into our training room with Dublin or obviously with you guys and Kerry, you're coming in and Donaghy is there and Jimmy's obviously still there. It seemed from the outside looking in that you were able to settle really quickly. And I find for younger players, they have a big game, a big moment, a big score or whatever it might be. And they gain, they earn the confidence of the, your teammates as well. And then you can relax and and be yourself, and you've seen you've been able to do that. But it seemed like you did that in 2018, in your first year. Was that was there a moment where you say, right, you can go to Danny and give out to him for taking a shot? You know what I mean? The shoes on the other foot. Was was there time for that? Like, yeah. Was there a game? Like I 
Plus, that, we were actually fairly poor in that league campaign. Like, aren't we, James, really? So, like, okay, like there wasn't probably a game stood out to kind of just, you would say that you were right because we were probably struggling through a lot of games. Um, I suppose it was probably maybe from chatting to the lads, maybe even, even chatting to, like, chats with Aim Fitzmaurice and stuff like that where you were kind of, I was kind of under the impression that, like, he was kind of going to give me, he was going to give me a good, good lash off regardless of how I was maybe performing at the start. And then, like you said, you kind of, you kind of felt like you maybe were a bit more comfortable in the sense, I suppose when it came, it kind of came to probably A versus B games in the run up to the championship where you're kind of realizing, oh, I'm actually been picked on the A's here and out straight away, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then you're getting a bit of confidence because I suppose in the league, you're never sure because there's always bodies that are missing. Mm. Um, but it was probably in those in the run up to the championship in those A versus B games, which was kind of the light bulb moment for me. I'd say. You probably like you need the faith of a manager as well, don't you? Like, it's it's fine to say oh you're getting the chance, but if you're in and out of the team, coming on maybe not coming on, a young fella is constantly doubting himself. Then, whereas if they just say right, look, you're in there at thirteen or fifteen, we'll give you five or six games, off you go. Like it's way easier to build and to grow then, rather than having the doubts in your head. Like the doubts would be bad enough when you're twenty eight or thirty. Never mind. 18, 19. <laughs> 100%, 100%, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you, you know, you're speaking about coming into that dressing room with a, you know, likes of Donaghy and James Donahue and Paul Ganey in the forward line. Donica Walsh, was it Donica probably still there around that time as well? Yeah. You're obviously now one of the eldest players. Ganey's still there, obviously, O'Brien's still there. Are yourself and Sean O'Shea able to pass on what you learned in those early years to? A Dara Roach or a Donald Down who are trying to break in this year. Tony, like Tony Brosnan's getting a shout as well this year. Are, are you already fulfilling that role? Um, yeah, I, I suppose, yeah, maybe you naturally kind of fit into that role. But I suppose it's, I think a lot of that stuff, and even probably James and I just said, a lot of that stuff is maybe subconscious. Like you're not maybe going out to say, all right, I'm going to have a chat with this fellow now today. You kind of maybe just, it just happens. And you, you know, maybe, and even the younger people, younger lads nearly end up asking the questions. So you're going to give them the response. But um, like I suppose you do, you do feel a bit more of an emphasis on and trying to maybe take on some sort of a leadership role, especially with the forwards unit. Um, now even though our backs are probably outscoring the forwards in most games we play at the moment, so uh, there isn't much more we can, we can say to them. Yeah, the Tom Sullivan on the outside of the left is that always like a 70 80 percent chance that it's going over the bar? <laughs> that is to be fair, like he's Tom is like. He played a lot of his football corner forward, like for 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 Dingle, like for for, for the school, like um, uh, just a ridiculous talent. To be fair to him, and like it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a great weapon to have because like if he's outscoring a lot of our forwards, then you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like he he's nearly going to take marking at some stage. He <laughs> actually played a good bit of football corner forward when he came in to carry first. Did you come in the same time? I say, Cliffy, did you? Uh, he, he must have been short up front a year or two before me. Yeah, he he was playing corner forward. He was actually outstanding. Honestly, he could play anywhere. Yeah, hundred percent. Tell me this: what's the story with the penalties? <laughs> Who, who's kicking the penalties? I don't know. We're gonna have to decide on it. Um, I say we've like, we've so many options though. The thing, like I'd say, there's probably ten fellas who could take them. What 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 were you doing at the weekend? You're holding on to the ball like a Premier League footballer to protect Tony. Like that, that's the first time we've seen that in a long time. The tip lads were hardly giving that much grief, were they? <laughs> didn't, it, didn't, it didn't really pay off anyway. No, like I suppose <laughs> it's a bit like it's probably actually we probably have to take the the mindset of the the manager where like you don't just get sacked off them for missing one pin. Or that's probably what we've been doing with them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, it's always the next one's the most important one. Then after yeah. you're missing one, like to go yeah, on and take the next one, Paddy, show the, the battle. Like. From Paddy, the, we're not rolling your penalty. penalty. We're not rolling no, your penalty. Geez, I never took one again. That was that's I lack confidence there. Once I missed, I never got another go at it. From the outside looking in. Cliffy, you want to be taking those penalties. <laughs> Nail that. Sure. We'll see. We'll Have see. a word with Jack. Yeah. A penalty in the That's next one would be nice. Now. Come here. Like, we haven't had a chance to talk to you properly. The, the last year uh, on the pitch and, you know, on a personal level has been absolutely relentless and you've had so much success as well. Have you enjoyed it? Uh, immensely, yeah. Like, I suppose, like, looking back on the year, like, you look back, of course, on the moments in the games, like, but really you look back on the days and the times after the games like and the crack we would have had with, with, with different groups um like and that's something that you you are supposed you're really anxious to, to have again like i suppose you're thinking of maybe the week after the all Ireland last year or the couple of days uh with fossa like you know you're you're like you never really forget those days um so it was enjoyable and i suppose like everyone probably talks about the tiredness element and stuff like that but 
for a good few months we were literally just playing the games at the weekend doing a bit of skill work in the week and playing the game at the weekend so like you did always kind of feel fresh and then the fact that we were winning so many games you kind of you were you were well aware of the fact that this possibly wasn't going to last forever so you were really trying to trying to soak it up you know yeah um James would have often spoken before about just knowing that yourself and your group of friends when you were younger you were always out kicking and we've heard Sean O'Shea talking a lot about you know the hours he put in in Kemmer that paid off around that that free kick last year in, in Crow Park uh, when he was a kid. Are you still someone who gets to go down to the pitch with a bag of balls and go kicking? Outside, uh, of, outside of training, or is there any time for that nowadays? I know there is, yeah. I've, I've, um, like, I suppose I would say that I would, maybe if I'm, if I'm happy with my kicking, I'll, the training will be enough for me. But then if I'm not, I'll go to the pitch because I'll just be thinking about it and stuff like that. If you feel like you've stuff to work on, like I, I go to the pitch, but... Um, if it, on a good week I might get down to the pitch once and then there'll be weeks where I just do it before and after training and that's kind of enough at times um, but look I suppose you're kind of trusting that like if you don't kick well for a period of time whatever like it's not gone like you haven't lost it I, I, you, you'd be kind of do you know what I mean it's just about trying to maybe get back to it and do you know trying to get back to basics do you know yeah, essentially yeah. that's all it is there Would you have any structure kicking Cliffy like if you were if you were to go up I'm going for a few kicks here because we, we had McGuigan on, and he said he'd take about 70 shots as a warm-up. Like, <laughs> like that's ferocious kicking. But would you have, like, would you say, I need to score so many points, or would you have so many off the left, off the right, different angles? Like, how would you go about it? Uh, no, not really, no. Um, I would just, I just like, try and spit a 50-50 between freeze and, and, and shots from play. Um, I'd probably always try and go back to, like, the last game. Maybe if you missed a shot, I'd be going to that spot maybe first, right, just to yeah. try and get it off your conscience, I suppose, is the first thing. Um, but no, like, I suppose the only thing, I just try and, as like that, I just remember being, just being known there for hours and then your quads and stuff like that would be, getting, would be fairly broke up after it. So just trying to set, I generally just set about 25 minutes to half an hour or whatever and try and feed it in when maybe I'm going down to do the, the upper body session of the week. I just try and do the bowler in maybe in, in whatever, in the hour and a half or whatever like that. So that's the, only, that's the only kind of restriction I put on it because you'd be down there for hours otherwise. Like, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've, I've always been interested in, you obviously had a lot of habit last year, um, I'm not going to ask you about the Monday club and whether you get sick of Monday club, but finals itself, you, you always seem to turn up and embrace the occasion. Would you be a fella who would get hyped up in the build up to a game or are you quite calm and relaxed or, or how, how, do, how do you approach the big days? Um, yeah, like I suppose it's probably changed because you're still kind of only trying to like figure it out really do you know what I mean over the past few years I, I try and I, I would like to think I'd be calm enough um, I, like I don't really pump myself up or try and get too pumped up I don't think there's any real roaring and shouting like I, I, I'd be calm enough I suppose you're just like you're trying to I, I, it's hard to put your finger on it but you're trying to I suppose try and I suppose something I, I would have done I'd probably just do a bit of work with sports psychologists and stuff trying to look at I suppose what's kind of the worst thing that can happen on the day and like let's say right we, we've had some of the toughest days with Kerry like losses you go and you look like as bad as those days were you're still able to come from them like your life was still kind of relatively the same within a week or so so if that's the yeah. worst case scenario then for everything in between you can kind of handle so then I think that that allows me to take a bit of the pressure off like like right if I'm going into a final I know right look there's going to be probably whatever a bit of a bit of a, a few beers with the lads the day after right you can enjoy that then you you know you might have to go back to school or Foss might have a game in the weeks after so that's kind of that's kind of going to be there anyway so that, I I just think that takes the pressure off me because I know I can kind of handle if it goes as bad as possible so then if there's anything in between then I, I can kind of handle what comes at me if, if if that's if that makes any sense yeah it does yeah I'm, I'm like just I'm curious the last year's All Ireland final the the morning of it are you bagging nerves or are you feeling like that that day of it like is that how you felt in the build up to that game uh yeah yeah and again you're just trying to you're just trying to I suppose do anything but think about the game. We were out okay. in Carton House, and there was we spent about two hours in the putting green. And we were playing. That's like Jack O'Shea back in the day playing a round of golf the morning of an All Ireland final. Uh, well, this is only a putting green now. There wasn't too much. <laughs> wasn't too much walking in it. But yeah, like you're just trying to, you're just trying to find any way of taking the pressure off yourself. Because look, there's enough. Yeah. Of course, there's enough pressure there. Like everyone is well aware of the fact that it's an All Ireland final and stuff like that. You're speaking to three fellas here now with no, absolutely no experience of it. Does being a father change it up? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure. Like it probably changes how you have to manage your time, but like maybe it changes 
possibly change your outlook and things like again when you're coming home like or when i come home ogie doesn't really care how carry you're getting on like so you're kind of <laughs> it's, a, it's it can be a good release from things at time at times um and then nah i'm not sure like it probably it maybe it changes how you how you, it changes how you spend your time of course and how you plan your time you can't go off and play golf two or three times a week like you'd want to but uh outside of that not it's, it's very enjoyable to be fair it's funny Dave from our side we had a couple of older lads to, coming towards the end of the career and they would have had that when they had their first child and what you're talking about there the perspective it gives you that when, when you're younger football is all encompassing that the level we're playing at you're trying to win all Ireland it, it is pretty much dominating every aspect of your life and a defeat can yeah it can be heavy at times but the only you get you can kind of have more perspective around your work, your career outside of it. But all the lads would say to a man having a young fella or, or, or a new baby gives you that. allows you to relax a little bit more away from you. You're still as focused, obviously, on your performance and things like that. But I think it's a great thing. The sooner you can realise that as a player, that it isn't life and death. They're, they're, okay, it's high pressure, but there's more to it. And, and I think having that perspective earlier in your career is a great attribute to have. So, Delighted for you. Yeah, yeah, 100% exactly. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a, a fairly good tour guide in James O'Donoghue on Thursday, the 4th of May. We're in Killarney for a live road show. Um, <laughs> Will we... Jack give you a night off for a few points, David? <laughs> I'll meet you in the nugget. Unlikely. Should we, Jack is we... coming. <laughs> Jack will be first in the door. <laughs> Two vodka <laughs> sodas in hand. Should we be heading, <laughs> should we be heading to the Golden Nugget? Is, is, would that be a recommendation or anywhere else? Yeah, I think I think the outback will be just opening up out in the nugget now around that time of the year. It's, it's nice out there. So I'll yeah, we'll the come down for a week. Before we go off on the nugget, did you or did you not proofread your brother's speech after the All Ireland final? I didn't. The club <laughs> final. I didn't. Um I know look, I suppose there was a lot of emotion at the time. He, he like it was uh it was a huge talking point after like and it, it we loved, loved it. it. We I loved, loved it. It. <laughs> it was box office stuff from the GM moment of the year. <laughs> I think so. It's right up there. Like. <laughs> so there was uh, no proofreading. Okay, that's fair enough. Oh, very um, little party doesn't really do proofreading, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. All right, He's David. Look, delighted to have you on the football pod. Uh, it was great to have you on for a chat and uh, best of luck. You've got the monster final against Clare on Sunday, May the seventh. So we'll all obviously be keeping a close eye on that. And then there's a new All Ireland round robin series. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting year. We're going to be figuring out how teams are going to be approaching that. So David's been speaking to us today with thanks to Super Value as part of their launch of their community includes everyone campaign and they're sponsoring the senior All Ireland Championship for a fourteenth consecutive season. So uh, keep an eye out in the Off the Ball GA podcast feed. There's plenty more there. Am I right in saying you've got a summer camp this year? Have you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, late in the summer, I and myself and Shane and Ryder are looking after a bit of a camp. So we'll. Uh, what are you doing? Coaching, coach, coaching. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a GA camp. Yeah, I suppose something we've talked about in the past few years. Um, so look, just numbers have been have been um have been fairly big so far. So we're looking forward to. It. Okay. I hope Shane and Ryder isn't doing any skills coaching. Is he thinking there? He's doing the admin <laughs> in the background. Lockdowns. <laughs> and a bit of uh, a rooting and daring. Uh, Bit of financial literacy as well, I think he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the job for Shane. <laughs> Thank you, of course. David Clifford, thanks a million. Appreciate thanks it. Cheers, David. Yeah, thanks, David. Thanks, David.